Hey, what's up guys? Tugi here, back again. This is episode two of A Nation United, featuring of course Team Sweden, and let's get right into it because we have a couple of things I want to discuss before we begin our first season with the Stockholm Kings. And I'll say this, first and foremost, the response to the debut episode was unreal. Thank you guys for that. Not just the view count, but the debate, the comment section in general, whether it was constructive, whether it was, oh, I wish you had gotten this guy, or whether it was, oh, you're a fucking moron, you really should have picked this other guy. 95% of the comments in that tone were about Ricard Raquel, which, which I understand, arguably, probably, definitely should have gone for him. But I don't know. I don't know. I think we'll be all right. I think we'll be all right. I think we'll find a way to still turn this team into a dynasty. But that's the great part. That's what I love about fantasy drafts, especially to making a series on YouTube, you know, around a fantasy draft is there's always going to be that debate. There's always going to be that discussion in what people would have done differently and what players they wish I had gotten. And of course, the point of the fantasy draft in general was to make this series more difficult. As I talked about during the draft, if I didn't do a fantasy draft, we'd have a super team. We would have a super team. And right now, we certainly don't. A big, a big thought process of mine throughout the draft was not wanting to be too close to the cap floor. As you'll notice, quite a few teams are, simply because of the amount of players they have under contract. Of course, to rectify that and to avoid that situation... I could have just, you know, signed some random Swede to the max deal and could have avoided that. But, you know what? It is what it is. I'm not going to discuss it too much because what's done is done. We have our starting team and we're going to get into this. But I do want to mention the three big players that were brought up as far as who I should have uh, or who I could still possibly get. The first one, William Carlson. I definitely think we could afford to get him here. Now, to be honest, I barely looked at the trade values we could get William Carlson it would probably take someone like uh, Gabriel Carlson or maybe Kempe which I'm not too hot on trying to trade him away maybe even Melker Carlson and a draft pick I think we could get that to work but the problem is I don't necessarily want to give away too many draft picks because the more draft picks we give away the more difficult it might be to end up with, you know, a high-end Swede in one of the first two drafts. Of course, Lilia Grin in the first draft, I think it's who everyone wants me to get. There are a couple of other options. And then in the year two draft, Rasmus Dahlin, I don't know of anybody that wants me to pass up on him so far. So we have to be careful with our draft picks. We are more of a rebuilding team at this point, and then obviously you factor in that I took, you know, Henrik Sedin and Cronwall. The team is in an interesting spot. We're not a playoff contender. We're not a complete rebuilding team. And that's how I wanted it to be. But William Carlson in general is somebody we could pick up. I'm not going to do that at the moment. But it's something we can keep an eye on. And of course we know he is on Detroit. The second big time name, no surprise here, William Nylander. I don't know if we can get him, guys, because of his value. And my God, Montreal are set up pretty damn well. But his value is pretty damn high. We might not be able to get our hands on William Nylander in this series. I mean, I don't know who we could give up. We'd probably have to give up Hampus Lindholm, Landeskog, and more because Montreal doesn't want to trade him. Now, I'm sure people would be like, ah, oh, fuck it, get rid of Landeskog because not too many people had faith in Landeskog. But because they don't want to trade him, we would have to give up a lot to get him. And then the third player was Daniel Sedin, who we could pick up. Now, of course, trading for Daniel, is that the smartest thing to do, <laughs> given his age? Because, again, we don't necessarily want to give up draft picks. We'd probably have to give up a prospect to make it work, maybe even Louis Erickson. So it's... It's tough. I, I'm not going to make any moves in this episode. What I am going to try to do is make it to the All-Star break. We'll see where our team stands, and then we'll check back on trading for certain players. 
Because if we're not in a playoff spot, and you could argue not making those moves right now is absolutely setting this team up to not be a playoff contender. And you're probably right with some of the weak spots that we have. But again, do we want to give up Gabriel Carlson down here in the AHL, medium top four potential? Do we want to give him up to get William Carlson? Do we want to give him up to get Daniel Sedin? I'm not entirely sure. It is a tough debate. And I do look forward, though, to simming through this episode, finding out what our situation truly is, and then making that decision. Like I said, I understand people wanting, like, trust me, I wish there were, there are plenty of other players, and I made it pretty clear <laughs> during that draft, like, shit, there goes that player, damn it, there goes that player. This isn't the exact team I wanted. That's the point. That is the point of the series, to make it a little bit more challenging. But this is the team we are rolling with here to start Landeskog, Henrik Sedin, and Arvidsson. Of course, you guys have already seen this lineup. Down in the AHL, though, it has changed. I have put our best players, potential-wise, into the lineup. And, of course, there was a big-time debate over one Michael Karainen. And I am going to have to go to this part to find him. Born in Stockholm, Sweden. Technically Finnish. The game, though, also recognizes him as Swedish. So, uh, he's on the team for this year, and then we'll probably cut him. Although, he is a pretty damn good playmaker. He doesn't have much else going for him. But it's not like he's going to make the NHL team. So, I'm not too concerned about it. Everybody else, though, is good to go. And we'll see what kind of progression we can get from most of them. Let's get into the sim. And it is tough for me to just say, like, you know, fuck it, let's just start simming. Because I, I would like to make some trades, definitely. And I don't know, guys. It's just a matter of not wanting to risk too much of the future right now. You know, William Nylander, we'd be giving up a great player to make that work, if not more. We'd have to give up multiple pieces. Daniel Sedin, when, you know, the argument is, well, you drafted Henrik, so why wouldn't you want to trade for Daniel? And I get that, definitely, and Henrik actually just got injured in the first game of the season. Lovely. Lovely stuff there. <laughs> but it's, it's a tough debate, guys. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. And actually, you know what I'm going to do? <laughs> no, I'm not going to. You know what? That's exactly what I'm going to do. He's not starting. I'm going to call up Michael Karina. <laughs> I said he wouldn't hit the NHL level. First freaking game of the year. We lose Henrik Sedin. Fuck it. Let's put him into the lineup. See, the team puts him on the fourth line. I'm just going to go with uh, the best lines because who really cares right now? But that's just that I don't have to edit the AHL. And as a matter of fact... Did I drop the slider to the 10% or 9% that we agreed on with previous series? I don't think I did. Let me go to gameplay sliders. I haven't touched any of this. I don't necessarily know if I plan on it. Um, it's not AI. Is it the first one? Did I just... Yeah, I looked right past it. 50%. So yeah, let's let's drop this. Well, at least, at least Henrik, I mean, he was the sacrifice. <laughs> Henrik was the sacrifice... To uh, alert us to that fact that we hadn't changed the slider. That was something I forgot to do. I completely forgot to look back into the other settings, honestly. But, you know, that, that happens. That happens. One game in the books. And we lost to San Jose. <laughs> Great start. But, like I said, definitely, definitely a bit anxious to start making some moves with this team. That's going to be a common, common event throughout this entire series. Trades, signings. I mean, if you guys have watched one of my series, you know how it works. You know how it typically, typically goes. There might be some struggles, but eventually we get into that formula of where we are just churning out prospects and constantly recycling players in the bottom six while we have our core locked up. And I imagine this series will be no different. It's just a matter of how long it takes. Now, I'm actually not going to take that draft pick for Johnny Oduya. Oduya is absolutely somebody. We can look at trading later as Robin Leonard goes down to injury. Well, this is going well so far, isn't it? Goddamn. 
Uh, damn, injury. So Hunters Nelson will get the start. Let's call up Allmark. Yeah, we'll have Allmark as the backup. Screw it. And Marcus Hoiberg will get the starts. So let's go best lines here. And we'll have to edit this ourselves. Otherwise, the AHL would be a complete mess, especially too, because of course the game signed a ton of Finnish players to the AHL team for me, which not the ideal situation, but nothing I could do about it. And of course, I'm not even going to bother signing them and trading them away, at least not at this point. Doesn't make too much sense to do it, but let's see here. Is he fully healthy? Is Robin Leonard fully healthy? No, he is not. So Linus Allmark will get the start here in our next game. The three Buffalo goalies, as was pointed out. I didn't even notice when that happened, but hey, what can I say? The Sabres like their Swedish goalies. They might not now. Now that Tim Murray's been fired. But, yeah, that'll be very interesting to see what that team does <laughs> moving forward. Jack Eichel, not just a coach killer. He's a GM killer, too. I'm joking. Or maybe I'm not. Maybe you are happy as a Sabres fan that those two guys are gone. I don't know. It'll be interesting, though, to see what happens with that team. That is for sure. I'm still pumped. Now... If you watch the Rebuilding Hockey Town that hopefully came out alongside this, you will know I'm recording this video after that. And I talked about the playoff matchups in that video. And of course I talked about the Bruins. I got to admit though, even though the Bruins are on the verge of being eliminated, I'm not... My, my hype for hockey isn't gone. Not one bit. With the draft coming up, the expansion draft coming up, Free agency, just, there are so many unanswered questions still before we even get to the start of next season. That, that, hype, it, that hype train isn't slowing down anytime soon. Not even close. And with Buffalo cleaning house a little bit, it only gets even more interesting as the Rangers offer two second round picks for Cronwall. We'll decline that at the moment. Again, if we're a playoff team, maybe I will go out and try to, you know, get Daniel Sedin. Maybe even William Carlson. Alex, uh, not Alex Nylander, but William Nylander. Boy, that's looking unlikely. But you never know for sure. Robin Leonard, still not fully healthy. Are you kidding me? I thought said he would be healthy, healthy by November 1st. What the hell happened to that? So we're going to have to sim... This next game against the Anaheim Ducks, he should be fully healthy. We got a first round pick offer from the Blues. Damn. Needless to say, if we decide to sell some of these veterans, we're going to be good to go here, aren't we? We are going to be good to go. Man, that that's that is tempting already <laughs> to start taking some of these deals, but I want to see where we stand. And I have a feeling though at the end of this episode, when we hit the All-Star break, and when I ask you guys what should we do, the common suggestion, we'll say, will of course be to sell. That's, I mean, that's obvious. And it's, in fairness, what we'll do, more than likely. I didn't realize I didn't put Hoiberg as the starter. That is pretty rough. I am sorry you didn't get any starts. Any progression? Not, not anything crazy. But, ah, boy. It'll, it'll all work out. It'll all work out. And like I said, if you watched the Rebuilding Hockey Town video, you'll know how goddamn tired I am while recording this right now. It is very, very late for me. I'm not going to tell you how late, though. You need to go watch Rebuilding Hockey Town to find that out. Go check that series out. If you haven't started it yet, it's in a playlist on my channel. Just go ahead and marathon it. You'll catch up, and then you'll be like, oh, that's what he was talking about. And then it'll all be good to go. We'll be good. We'll be on the same page. I'm going to have to edit the trading block because these trades, these trade offers for Cronwall just keep on coming in. And that's getting annoying for me very, very quickly. We have a 7 5 and 2 record, and we're in a wild card spot. Of course we are. <laughs> of course we are. This is going to be, spoiler alert, very similar to the start of rebuilding Hockey Town, it seems like, where we are just. 
we we're not kind of we're not sure what kind of team we are at this stage where we think we might miss the playoffs and then we'll make it we're hoping to make the playoffs we'll probably miss it's going to be a wild ride for this team that is for sure the ontario rain though despite and it is early but despite a weaker team they have an eight and three record not too bad at all another trade offer for cronwall what's going to happen first i'm going to accidentally accept one of those trades or I'm going to go actually edit the trading block. What do you think will happen first? <laughs> oh my god, another offer. Yeah, I'm going to have to go edit that. The good news is, I know we can get a first round pick for Nicholas Cronwall. So, hooray for that. As we lose a couple of games here and we are still... Wow, we're in second place in the division. That's not what I was expecting at all. Damn, second place in the division despite not doing all that well right now. All right. Well, let's let's get rid of that so we don't have to reject the trade offer every 5 seconds and we will be good to go. Beautiful. Ricard Raquel though. <laughs> I'm not going to live that one down for a while, am I? Uh yeah, you know what? Screw it. I, I missed one of the one of the trades, that's that's fine. Let's just move forward. I think I was going to switch the goaltending here. Damn it, I wish I wasn't so tired, but I, I couldn't go two days without an upload. Couldn't do it. I could not do it. This team is still looking... Still looking all right. I mean, best lines, I could get a setup in a bit of a better way, but meh. Meh. If we end up being a playoff team, cool. If we don't, that just makes things easier. It makes the decision to sell that much easier. But there was a there was a bit of a discussion too during the fantasy draft how I you know wasn't like oh you didn't hit the right stick in and scroll over far enough. So like, no, the game just the game kind of handicapped me in terms of who was Swedish. The funny thing is, even if I could have looked during the draft at players' nationalities, I still would have picked Karainen <laughs> because he shows up as Swedish. So, yeah. That was a lose-lose situation with him, wasn't it? Lose-lose situation. Although I didn't even draft Karina. That was the free agent list, and the free agent list doesn't tell you either. The only time you can check is when you're trading for them, they're already on your roster or during the draft. That's what made uh, Nations United on NHL 16 so difficult, is it was often very hard to tell if the players we were drafting or not, or the players we were signing, were actually eligible. It was a massive pain in the ass. At least with this, it's nine times out of ten fairly obvious as to the nationality of the player. I mean, sometimes there are some uh, surprising ones. I Actually, there's a, um, there's a player on the AHL team at the game signed for me. That has, you know, just like a typical North American sounding name, I guess. A typical English sounding name. He's from Belarus. <laughs> Actually, he might not even... Was it Belarus? Regardless. Yeah, he's from uh, Central Europe there. So, you never know. You never know for sure. But 14, 10, and 2 for the Stockholm Kings. So we have another scouting assignment. We'll keep... Keep going for six weeks on each of the spots for the SHL, and then we'll poke around a little bit elsewhere, but it's not its not that big of a deal. I mean, we can only take Swedish players. They're going to be in limited quality. I mean, I do believe there are a couple of players in the CHL that are available to us, but they'll be high enough rated in the draft that we're going to immediately know who they are anyway. So I'm not all that concerned. But uh, Robin Leonard so far, 924 save percentage. Anders Nilsson, not so great. The 898 save percentage. The uh, I believe that was Tuka Rask. See, I don't uh, the only reason I the, again, I'm tired to tell and this is random. That was Tuka Rask save percentage before the previous game against Ottawa, game four. Yay! I'm not gonna talk about that. I already talked about that enough in the rebuilding hockey town episode. Let's see though. Let's see. We get the win against Pittsburgh. Three in a row. Picking up some steam. We lost to Connor McDavid and the Bruins. 
The Bruins have a hell of a team. I said that a few times during the draft, but when I was sorting through to try and find Nylander, Carlson, and Sedin, I noticed just, damn, they have a pretty solid team. We are still in a wild card spot. That is just not meant to happen. Not with this team, but anything's possible. Anything is possible once you are in this sim. I mean, Rasmussen's gone up a point. Melker Carlson has gone up an overall point. I think Landeskog has as well. Interesting. Lindholm in 89. Folan's gone up a point. You know, even if we end up selling, which then again, I am kind of glad we're only going to the All-Star break and not closer to the trade deadline, because it might be better to sell sooner rather than later, if that is the plan, to make sure that we don't end up finishing in a playoff spot. Because if the goal is draft picks, yeah, we're, we're going to want you know a lottery pick here. We're going to want a top 10 pick, per, you know, potentially. Depends on who we go for in this first draft. Like I said, quite a few options. Timothy Liljegren will, without a doubt, be the most popular target, despite us also using him in rebuilding Hockey Town, and he was in the previous fantasy draft series with the St. Louis Blues, but I did mention that I don't want to reuse too many players, but in this instance, it just it makes all the sense in the world to have Lily Grin on this team it makes all the sense in the world and we only have one more back-to-back -back. so barring any injuries it'll be a lot of ice time for robin leonard beautiful 19 15 and 2 21 7 and 0 oh for the ontario rain damn that is a solid record for that team linus allmark doing work right now of course, the defense is looking pretty good as we get. Yeah, you're you're not yeah you're, you're not Swedish, are you? <laughs> I got excited for a second. I'm like, oh shit, waiver claim, because that, that rarely happens in my series. Because normally we're towards the top of the standings. <laughs> I got excited. The odds that a Swede ends up on the uh, waiver wire, let alone a half decent Swede that we could actually put to use. Pretty damn slim odds. To say the least, we have a 25-17-2 record, man. We're doing pretty well. We are doing pretty damn well. Of course, saying that, yeah, of course. <laughs> That's now twice where I'm like, shit, we're doing pretty good. And then we immediately lose two games. Last time I said it, we lost three games. So that'll be interesting to see what happens next. I'm just going to scout the WHL forwards. For a month, why not? So we get the win against the Rangers. We need to put Nilsson in goal for this next game. 54 points for the Stockholm Kings. Unreal. Unreal. And we no longer, no longer have any yellow bars there. It's all green. It's all good. Let's see, Leonard, a 921. Nilsson turned it around. In his most recent games, Christian Follen up to an 84. Three overall point improvement, and Lindholm is up to a 90. Nothing yet from Adam Larson. A little bit disappointing. He turned into a monster in the Blues series, and that, of course, is what we're hoping for here. But I'm liking it. Some decent improvement from this team. Hopefully that can continue, even if we end up selling. I say if as, you know, as if it's not guaranteed <laughs> that you guys are going to tell me to sell. But, who knows? Who knows what this series will bring, and that's what I like about it. We have the challenge from the start, the unpredictability of, you know, potentially needing a big-time free agent signing or trying to make a trade and not being able to do it. It's it's all up in the air right now, and that's, that's why I'm excited. For this series. No guarantees with this series. Despite having higher odds to be a better team than we were in Nations United. And you know, despite having a 27, 20, and 2 record so far this season, it still could go very, very poorly for us. Or it could go very well. And we could be a dynasty yet again. But guys, already 49 games down, 
that is it. That is it for this episode. Let's take a look at the league-wide standings, take a look at some stats, and then, of course, you guys will once again have a chance. I will factor in. Don't think your comments from the last episode were irrelevant. I will factor in what was said there. I'll factor in what is said in this comment section, and we'll figure out what we're doing, who we're going to potentially try to trade for, and all that good stuff. But we are currently 14th in the NHL. Goals for per game. We're up there. More middle of the road, but we are up there. And then goals against per game. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Power play percentage isn't too bad. We're I mean, we're on pace, without a doubt, to be a playoff team, although our penalty kill is slightly more towards the bottom. But overall, despite some questionable players being on our roster right now, certainly those who might not be NHL ready, things are looking good. 45 points in 49 games for Victor Hedman, 39 points for Henrik Sedin Arvidsson. 37 points, 32 for both Melker Carlson and Louis Erickson. I'll scroll down, I won't name off everybody here. But very, very interesting stats for some of these players. And then the goaltending, Robin Leonard has been great for us so far. A 921 save percentage in 35 games, 16 appearances for Anders Nilsson. He has a 908. Let's take a look league-wide and see what's going on here. The goalie wins leader, Martin Jones for the New Jersey Devils. Tuka Rask in Calgary and Sergei Bobrovsky in Boston. Your top three. We'll take a look at the league-wide scoring. Is it going to be McDavid? No, it is not. Not even close. Wow, Patrick Kane, 68 points, 62 for Tavares, no surprising names, maybe JBR in Winnipeg, and then Daniel Sedin, 51 points in 50 games for the New Jersey Devils, the rookie scoring race, it is Austin Matthews, 44 points in Pittsburgh, Marner with 42 on the Devils, Mantha is up there, Patrick Laine, 25 points in 50 games. Not terrible, but a bit of a slow start. And then William Nylander up there as well. So far, it is Matthews versus Marner for that rookie scoring race. I don't think any goalies will be a factor. Stolarz has played 42 games for the Winnipeg Jets. John Gillies also with 29 games for the Anaheim Ducks. So still probably not, but a decent season so far. For Anthony Stolarz, despite only being an 80 overall. Guys, that'll do it. That will do it for the first episode of A Nation United. Maybe a little bit less... I'm trying to think of the right word here. Maybe I did a little bit less than I expected to. Maybe that's just because I am tired as hell. But I wanted to get an episode out there. Might not have been the blockbuster episode some people were expecting with trades... But there is still plenty of time. There is still plenty of time. And of course, if we decide to sell, my God. My God. I mean, and <laughs> the majority of the team could go. I don't think we get anything for Anton Lander. But players like him, Melker Carlson, Louis Erickson, Henrik Sedin. We could try to do some damage. Of course, Nicholas Cronwall, Johnny Oduya. If we sell, if that's the overwhelming feeling in the comments, as I think it will be, we'll be able to get quite a few assets, to say the least. And of course, the Ontario Reign doing very well, getting some decent progression as well from some of these players. Jonathan Dolan, despite only being a 70, doing well. Uh, Forsbacher Carlson, 30 points. Not too shabby. At all, Hampus Gustafsson, also doing really well. Johan Sundstrom, despite being 24, doing well. I still say, while we're not in as good of a spot as we could have been, regardless of whether or not we did the fantasy draft or not, we're in an interesting spot. And if we make the right moves at the right time, this team will be a dynasty for years to come. 
I'm looking forward to the journey. I hope you guys are too. Like I said, that is it for this one though. I'll finally stop talking and let you guys get out of here. But before I do, I will say if you have enjoyed this episode, feel free to support not only the video, but the channel in any way you deem necessary. Any and all support is more than greatly appreciated. Guys, I will see you in the next episode of A Nation United.